All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing and liking the videos. We truly appreciate it. We are back at it. Tesla has just sent the latest update, FSD beta 10.69.3.1. This is a step release before sending out version uh, 11, basically. So all the 10.69, all the 10.10 numbers um, that we've been sent so far have been leading up to version 11 which is a merging of the two code bases, the highway code base, as well as the city streets code base, uh, which you typically know as autopilot or navigate on autopilot versus FSD beta, merging the code bases, merging the code stacks into one unified platform, using the same code, using the same networks, using all the same features and functionality and the build methods that they use to deploy that code. All right, so this is a step release. This is a precursor to that release. Um, it shouldn't be anything major. The release notes are largely the same from uh, 2.4, um, but pretty much the same thing, same release notes, nothing really major here. So we're gonna take it out on a quick, quick drive on our first test path to see how different it is from 10.69.3 proper and go from there, all right? And then again, before Thanksgiving is what Elon is saying, which should be in another few days, uh, version 11 should start to go wider uh, in the beta in terms of some of the earlier uh, beta testers and some of the expanded beta testers and then probably wide by the end of the year. But it'll start rolling out to um, non-employees, he says, Elon says, by uh, or before Thanksgiving. So we'll see about that. All right, so let's take this out for a spin, see what it's like and go from there. I'll save the scoring for the end and I'll start to also explain a little bit of the scoring in between the drive here. Gauge it. Go. Wait for FSD beta code to turn on. It takes a second sometimes when you're in park for it to wake up. So I'll go really, really slow. There we go. It's waking up. And now we go. Just like dot three, it gets a little close here and hits this little uh, manhole cover. And this is a light day, really light traffic. So not a lot to see. And it's going to do it again. Boom, boom. There we go. A little slower this time. So that's good but it still takes the same trajectory as before. So again, not too much of a variance so far from 10.69.3. A bump up to 30, pop up the cameras and we're off. Very light traffic, so this should be very good for FSD beta. Again, debating that it wants to get over the shoulder going over the shoulder this time versus the last one where it didn't. And it takes a really tight turn here, which is not bad, but I prefer it not to go over the shoulder just to allow it to make a proper turn. Coming to almost a complete stop with no one around. So this is a bad thing. Autopilot creeping up for visibility. So I think it's trying to look further around the corner and sees that it's a bit of a blind corner. And then it comes to a stop, which is a big difference from every other build prior to, to 10.69.3. When 10.69.3 went, this last time on our first impressions, there were cars in the way that caused it to slow down. Now there's no cars at all. And it seems to be uh, you know, slowing down very, very precautiously. Again, this could just be over precaution on the side of Tesla and the fact that they're trying to release something to a wider group of people and want to be extra cautious. Our unprotected left turn comes up here. I'll give you the play by play. Someone is creeping on the right. Two cars are coming from the right. No one is coming from the left. All right, give me some feedback. Checking for visibility, creeping forward. Now someone's coming from the left. It's a little bit of a slim window. Autopod decide, thinks he wants to go, then it kind of stops, which is good. And now it goes. Someone else is still coming from the left, but it's going pretty good. Okay, excellent job there. Uh, it sort of wanted to leap out, which is what it did the last time on 69.3, right before a car came. It decided against that and then proceeded when the window was wider, the margin was wider. So good job on that Tesla for fixing that issue there. Uh, now I'm not as uncomfortable with it making that maneuver. Again, extremely light traffic. It's almost like a holiday right now. So it's early in the more earlier in the morning on a weekend or a uh, weekend day, people are sleeping in. So not too challenging, but it does give us a baseline of what FSD beta is thinking about and how it's thinking about going about doing things. Slowing down, anticipating this car turning, which is a good job, but again, a little too overcautious on the on the braking, so not too good. And then we're going up business as normal. This seems all straightforward. Shouldn't be any phantom braking. Sun is is kind of weird now in the fall. Uh, this the lighting, 
the, t- the, the harshness of the sun, uh, the angles of the sun is a little bit uh, extreme, specifically for FSD beta. And typically the front cameras don't typically get blinded by the uh, sun, but typically the side cameras do. Let's see what happens here. Gets into the appropriate lane, changes the lane and goes in. Good job. Person behind me went in the wrong lane. Now it turns back forward and goes straight. Let's see if it stays the course like 10.69.3 and goes straight. This person's trying to beat me to the light. It's drifting and it slows down a little bit. So here it's going back to some old behaviors, kind of wanting to stay centered in this lane, but still ultimately ends up here. And that was the observation from 10.69.3. It wanted to go on that side of the lane, the right side of the lane, and decided to stay, but it was a little bit more confident on 10.69.3, especially this one where a car was passing on the right. Uh, but ultimately stayed here. So that's pretty good, not greatest, not as good as 10.69.3, but still pretty good nonetheless that if staying here and doesn't try to go all the way over here. Prior to 10.69.3 build, right? It would try to veer to the right a lot. Start on the left, veer to the right. Squirrel in the middle of the road, does it see it? Does not really see it, but it made it away safely, great. Coming up to a red light. Stays to the left mostly, but still kind of trying to fight to be centered in the lane. I can feel it a little bit. It's not terrible, not terrible. Just something I'm observing right now because there's no cars on the side of the road to keep it straight. Now here's a tough turn for for FSD Beta. It typically likes to go in, then go wide. Let's see if it does it again here. No cars behind us, so it's not as much of a risk. Slows down, now it's a red light. Good job there, all right? It is a turn on red, so it's making the turn on red. Excellent job there. I think the light helped it because it didn't get a chance to veer, but it slowed down in anticipation of the light and went the right direction. So really, really good job there, FSD Beta. All right, and we're at our destination. So, so far, so good. We'll do our second pass and then see how it fares. All right, pass number two. If I said we're gonna do only one pass, we'll do two passes. Pass number two, here we go. See what happens here. Pedestrian on the scooter, always stop. Proceeding forward very carefully, making the turn nicely, watching the curb, hit a little bit of a pothole, still don't have pothole avoidance. I'm gonna keep saying that, obviously it's a long ways away, but just for the record. Good job going over the train track. Now it has to get into this left lane, Let's see what happens. Good job stopping. And as I said before, you kind of want to keep your wheel straight when you're in a turning lane and not turn it. This one actually keeps the wheel turned this way pretty consistently. So if someone was to hit us, we wouldn't go into oncoming traffic. We go into this traffic going this way. So something to note. Now it starts to straighten out a bit and it starts to turn its wheel a lot. Again, not the correct behavior, but I'm going to give it a pass. And we go. Turn is not wide. It's nice and smooth good job there and now here's where things get a little bit awkward past this second light not this light but the light after it all the cars have to get to the right side of the lane and fsd beta tends to do that very late (laughs) and especially if cars are kind of pass and it wastes the last minute to get over i don't suspect anything has changed here but the only difference is that there's no cars behind us right now okay staying over and it's waiting to the last minute and it decides to get over now. So not good, not good on that one. Um, it should definitely get over a lot sooner because cars are pretty anxious. And again, that's the people element of it. That's what the hardest component of FSD beta and AI is gonna be is, is managing the people element of it. The unpredictable nature, the erratic nature of how humans drive and being able to manage against that. So sometimes when I say the car should drive like a human so it can mimic behaviors and start to prepare itself and put itself in positions like humans do. 
It can drive like a robot all day. But if it's driving like a robot and people are driving like people, it's going to cause the robot to have problems. And that's my my whole basis of my theory. All right. Let's see what happens when we go straight and make this next turn. So far, so good. I'm pretty comfortable here. Again, almost no traffic out here. Um, so not really a true, true test, but it is good to see it ride the road, see what it's thinking, imagining if no one was on the road and, and just driving as such. So this is good to see nonetheless. Green light, go. When I make this turn, then I'll start to speed up with the limit. Right turn coming. Let's see what happens. Looks pretty good on the path planner. A little, little herky jerky there, not as smooth, but good nonetheless. And then it gets into the lane and goes. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed here. Some slight refinements to 10.69.3. Uh, really just one area of regression, just getting into that shoulder for the turning lane so far. But decision making has been good. Safety has been good and level of comfort and confidence have also been good so far. Confidence is a little bit wavering in terms of just some hesitation, but being overly cautious is not necessarily a bad thing. That could also be a sign of confidence that I'm confident that I'm making the right decision by waiting versus jumping out there. And that was evidence in the first uh, unprotected left turn there where it sort of wanted to jump out, stopped, waited for a bigger gap and then jumped out even further. So that's pretty cool. Not so great on the winding road where it sort of came to a complete, almost a complete stop and basically, uh, you know, wanted to put on the turn signal for just a turn, a bend in the road, not necessarily a turn. It's a little bit different there. So those all those are all the things that factor in pedestrian walking across the street, slows down pretty good. Let's him pass and then goes um, on these suburban roads where people can park on the right. Um, it is starting to bias a little bit more towards the center line, which is a good thing, which is what we were asking for. So that's a good thing. Let's see what happens on this next street, which is typically when there are some cars and then there aren't. So right now it's way over to the right, has to get over to the left to pass this car. And then I can assume it's gonna it's actually over the yellow line. So that wasn't great because it could have had a little bit of a window to stay within the yellow line. But overall, yeah, it looks like it's gravitating towards this yellow line. So that's a, that's an awesome update here where it's not sort of trying to stay centered. You can see it here. It's closer to this yellow line than it is to the center of the road, which is what we've been asking for. So that's pretty good. I'm going to go up to 30 just to uh, speed up the process and see how it handles a slightly faster speed. Again, no one behind us, no one to the side of us, no one in front of us, completely open roads, which is a great way to test FSD beta, the safest way to test FSD beta, but not a true test, because again, that human element is really key to understanding how it handles things around it. People, pedestrians, other cars on the road, etc. Always stop, good job. Blind sweeping corner up here. I like to go 30 just to test this out. Sometimes it does a really good job. Sometimes it does a not so good job. Let's see what happens. Just a blind sweeping corner. A little bit hesitant, but still stays confident. Oh, I've missed the pothole again, so I'm happy about that. And I did pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. It's going to be a median up here. It's going to slow down to about 15 miles an hour. And hopefully it makes the right situation here why it does this but okay extremely slow around this median a car is coming in here we have to turn in here let's see what happens it waits for the car this is not great um, because it can go and it's choosing not to and my speed changes to 50 and i'm going to get ahead of it and drop it down to 25. again speed limit mapping is still off i don't know if that's a part of the map data or not but Tesla, Elon, team, we got to get on that. There are residential roads that turn to 50 miles an hour. That's not good in the Northeast. We got to change that. We got to fix that. This should not be 50 miles an hour. If there is no limit, they should change it to 25 by default. If it's in a residential area or a park like this and go from there, but it should not just default to 50. I've gone down some streets, residential roads where kids are playing, and it just turns to 50. I have to take control and 
intervene. So not great. But this is doing a great job here. Going up this winding mountain road, a pedestrian. Whoa, pedestrian. Excellent job avoiding the pedestrian. Excellent job avoiding the pedestrian and not going too fast. Excellent job there. Okay, that's the superhuman nature. Maybe I couldn't see it because the sun is out and it was in my blind spot, but the car saw it. Getting a little too close to these leaves and the leaves are actually helping keep it some distance from the end, from the curb or from the uh, sort of ditch here. <laughs> it's not even a curb. So that was pretty good. All right, that was pretty good, okay? Real speed limit sign is 10 miles an hour. Teslas are not trained to adhere to anything under 25 miles an hour right now, just as an FYI. 10, 15 miles an hour, five mile an hour signs, it's not gonna adhere to. It sees it, it knows how to, how to read it and calculate it, but it's just not adhering to it just now, so that's okay. But here we go, uh, we're moving forward. Again, speed limit still reads 50, not good, especially in a park like this. But overall, it's, it's, it's rock solid right now in anticipation of the next build, which is version 11, which should be even better and also be uh, adding some additional capabilities or smoothness, I should say, to auto highway autopilot, which should be interesting. Which should be interesting because highway autopilot has been rock solid for years. Rock solid for years. So I'm just concerned that they don't break something. Because that's one thing Tesla can do sometimes is makes one thing better and then something else breaks. So it's sort of like whack-a-mole. You knock one down, another one pops up. And that is my concern. We've seen that evidenced here in FSD beta testing, seeing some things get fixed, some other things not get fixed. Putting on a turn signal, going super wide. I'm gonna intervene here and I'm gonna flag that. Just way too wide. And we expect this, this is a park. This is not officially part of the test because it's a park. It's gonna go wide here where park cars typically are. It goes back to 50 miles an hour. I'm gonna drop down to 20 miles an hour. Look at this, way fast. Whoa, I'll drop down to 15, Let's see what happens. Aggressive braking, this is just extra credit to see if it can do it. This is not a typical use case, so you know you can count this out for the overall drive. The drive is just to get to the point where the parking lot was and see what happens. Super, super wide. And again, just trying to get into this curb. So now we know it wasn't the rain like we thought before. It's actually something wrong here where it makes this turn and almost crashes into the curb as soon as I put my foot on the brake. It still had the turning angle, but it was probably going to go too wide. But when I put my foot on the brake, it disengages everything and it kind of looks like it's going to go into the curb. So this is, again, not a typical scenario. You should never take FSD beta through a public park where people, pedestrians, kids are. Shouldn't do it. This is just extra credit because I knew not a lot of people were going to be here. And again, I'm extra vigilant in testing that. So just, you know, take that as a precaution. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. In this particular instance, I never typically come here where there's a lot of kids or people here. And I'm always extra vigilant of, the, of my surroundings here. I'm not just letting it drive through. So that's that. Um, I think we're pretty much done here. I'm going to pull in here. Can't wait for the point where we can actually park our Tesla and let the Tesla park itself, but we'll get there. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's the drive. Uh, let me give my thoughts and feedback and give it a score. But before I do that, let me explain and break down the score for you guys. Cause I see a lot of you guys in the comments saying, oh, the score is wrong and you can't do it this way and you can't judge a, a drive that way. You can't say that it's bad and it's good. Let me explain it to you right quick. Okay, so the way that the, I'm scoring this is based on human perception. It is extremely subjective, not objective. There is no real objective way to score whether it does did something pass or fail for every drive because the circumstances are changing every time. So the car is not gonna do the same thing always, all the time, based on the conditions around it, all right? So it's unfair to, make, to try to make an objective scoring system. We wanna try to make a subjective scoring system based on our perception. So think about it like this. If you take an Uber driver, or a Lyft driver, whatever the case may be, from one location to the next, right? And one driver drives great, and they're speeding up fast or slowing down aggressively um, and doing all the wrong things, and against the, the, against the driver that does everything great, you're gonna say, hey, you know what? That first driver is better than the second driver, okay? But if you have the same driver, and that one driver drives one time, he does something really good, 
Another time he does something really bad, but then ends up making the drive very good. Your overall impression of the drive is going to be that, hey, this guy is pretty decent. He's he, this guy or gal is pretty decent. They're pretty good at driving. And I was OK with my drive. I'm going to give them a four star rating or three star rating or five star rating potentially. But it's about the perception. One wrong thing does not make the complete the drive completely bad. And one good thing doesn't make the drive completely good. It's the totality of the entire drive, how you felt at the end of the drive that makes it up. And that's going to consist of some good things and some not so good things. But the overall experience is what we're trying to gauge. And that's the same thing here with FSD beta. We're trying to gauge the overall experience. It does some things bad, which, OK, doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't make me feel comfortable. But if the rest of the drive is comfortable, overall, I'm going to have a sentiment of, hey, this was a decent drive. This is a pretty good drive. So that's where we're trying to go with the scoring system. So with that said, when I look at the, the different criteria here, um, I'm going to give it these numbers. Right. So in terms of <clears throat> in terms of level of comfort, the overall level of comfort, I want to give this um, an eight out of ten. Now, primarily, this is getting an eight out of ten because there were no other cars on the road. So it was nothing to really get nervous or squirrely about. But I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. In terms of decision making, the things that it did, I'm also going to give it, I'm going to excuse me, I'm going to give it a seven out of 10, right? It made majorly the right decisions at the right times, but sometimes it decided to make, you know, thought about making some wrong decisions, like when it tried to jump out in the middle of the unprotected left turn scenario, right? Try to jump out a little bit and stop. That was sort of a wrong decision, but it kind of caught itself. When it tried to get a little bit centered in the lane when the guy was passing him, that was sort of the wrong decision, but it sort of corrected itself and stayed the course. So that's why I'm giving decision making a seven out of 10 in terms of um, safety. I felt really safe throughout the whole drive. I didn't feel like it was going to do anything dangerous. And I don't count that last part because, again, that's extra credit. But from the drive to get here to the parking lot where I would typically take over and park the car anyway, um, I was going to give it a, a eight out of 10, eight out of 10 on this one. All right. In terms of in terms of uh, safety um, and in terms of confidence, how confident was the car? I'm going to give it a seven out of ten only because it seemed a little overly cautious again, which is not a bad thing. But in terms of it having the full confidence of where it's going and how it's going to maneuver, I would like it to have a little bit more confidence. And again, totally subjective, totally subjective based on me being in this car. I'm trying to give you guys the experience of what it's like to be in this car. But there's also some things that I can't convey to the camera. And so that's why I'm giving you this subjective perspective. Now, I could do the exact same drive and it could perform differently at different times of the day with different traffic conditions, with different weather, et cetera. But for this drive, this is not indicative of the whole build. This is just this drive. This is what it gave me. And this is how I felt. And it was pretty confidence inspiring. It was very comfortable. I felt safe. It did the things I expected it to do. And then very rarely, except for, you know, the, the incident where I thought it was rain related, it did the things that I, I didn't expect it to do. And that's really what, it's, what it comes down to. So people will buy this. People will use it based on a level of comfort. And comfort comes from having proper expectations, just like highway autopilot. You know what to expect with highway autopilot. That's why you can use it with a level of confidence that you typically don't have. Right. Um, and that's why your people who use it, like myself, um, use it knowing when to use it and when not to use it. So same thing with FSD beta, right? So you can't just drive anywhere with it right now. You want to drive in places that you know it's going to do well, you know it's going to be successful in and go from there. Ideally, when it gets to its more mature state, it will drive at a, at a, at a scenario where it can drive anywhere because it'll do all the right things you expect it to do. Follow all the traffic rules, follow all the local uh, sort of human behavioral rules that are followed in certain areas. And that's going to give you confidence to be able to have confidence in the system. All right. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think about this particular drive. Not the build as a whole. That's not what the scoring system is about. It's about this particular drive. And then we add up the drives and come up with a sort of a, 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 an average grade, if you will, for the actual build. Now, for this build, I don't think it's going to last too long. I think version 11 is going to come right behind it. But let me know. Let's try to get some a couple more drives in and see how it does. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you got this build, let me know what you think about it. Let me know how it how it fares over 69.3 for those who got those. Let me know how it, how it fares for those that have 2.4, which uh, precedes uh, 69.3 that a lot of people, mostly people have now and they don't have 69.3. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.